Hello, in this video I want to have a look at the Great Pyramid. Now this is before the High Aswan Dam in the flood season. You can see how the waters come right up, uh, right, basically right up to the base of it. You have this um, steep bank on the side. But there we see the Great Pyramid. And just behind it you see Caffrey's Pyramid, which still has the limestone casings there at the top. That's an easy way to pull them, uh, separate them. But the, what's actually happening with the casing stones it's a bit it's very important but it's a bit of a, an enigma so there we see the uh, pyramid as it looks now the great pyramid or khufu uh, or cheops as it's called and now this is an older photo and when, but there we see so now all around the pyramid it's been cleaned up uh, but we see older photos at the base of the well, all of them, but especially the Great Pyramid, where we still see so much of this rubble that uh, was there was a big earthquake, and then they were able to prise out and remove so much of the casing stones, which was then uh, recycled and used to create uh, the old city of Cairo. Here's another example of that, where you see the pyramid, but all this rubble was surrounding it. Now, I can't really tell from these photos, so this mound of rubble, might have been separate so if you were to see behind the mound the base of the pyramid is probably clear so this debris here probably is not pushed up against this is the old stereo uh, stereophonic photography where you'd look at it you know, almost um, sort of the old 3d photography but there's probably a gap between this mound of rubble and the base of the pyramids and i'll show you why so uh Remnant of the original casing stone surface of the Great Pyramid near the middle of its northern foot. That's an important, this is on the north side, as discovered by the excavations of Colonel Howard Weiss in 1837. And we'll look at photos of this, but you can see, so there's still rubble there on top, where the, uh, and this was a very important uh, feature in terms of surveying the pyramid, because there was so much rubble piled up, sand and rubble around the outside of the pyramids, they couldn't do an accurate survey of there. Oh, this is an example, so this is more like if you look at uh, the Caffrey Pyramid, where you still have the casing stones up on the top, but next to it there we have the Great Pyramid on the northern side, and that's a, it's a very accurate illustration, we'll look at the photos. So here we see you know, the, where the Gentleman Scholar Age, let's call it, where they're doing a lot of excavations there, and you can see this is the northern side of the pyramid where these casing stones survive. And there's also this uh, well, is it a trench or was that an original, was that excavated there or was there um, an older, you know, much older excavation or something? Just pay attention to that as well. But here we see the casing stones as after, you can even see the cleanup happening. So when Petrie arrived and then up to the 1920s and J.H. Cole, they were still cleaning the site. There's a photo, older black and white photo of the casing stones. Again, this is on the northern side. These are the casing stones on the northern side. Here's another example of casing stones there on the, and this was a very important feature to work out the angle from these casing stones. A comparison of the older photos where it was definitely there, the rubble's piled up right against the base. This would be the very, very early days of photography, um, and this is probably a little bit later, but at before the surveying was done, the rubble surrounded the base of the pyramids, quite a lot of it. So even though a lot was removed back in the 11th century, a lot of it remained until the early 20th century. Again, this that's the, uh, from the uh, Piazzi Smythe uh, in his collection, but from the age of Colonel Weiss, 1837. So photography was 1839, the first photographs, but so we compare that illustration and you can see it there now. Notice there's a wide block and a narrow block and we'll see better photos but we see this wide block and the narrow block there. So it's actually a pretty good illustration of what was there. Compare that to, this is a screenshot from uh, Google Earth. Now even if you note at the end there's these damaged blocks and you get a hint of them over here as well. But there are some important um, things happening here. So we compare this older photo to what it looks like now on the northern side. Here's just another angle 
again, so you can see the Almamun entrance. You know, if you're just to go up a little bit further, is the main entrance, but this is the northern side as well. And we'll go back. Now you notice there's that gap there. Now this seems to have been repaired, filled up, whatever, so that doesn't exist anymore. Um, but again, you can see, get an idea of that on the western side of those remaining casing stones. And you can sort of see a bit of it there as well, but just that. And that does match up rather well. But if you do a comparison to this old photography and what it looks like now, now you can, you know, you can see there's this feature where it's been cut out or a breakage there. You can see this notch. Again, these features match up. But when we get to this part, you see there's a quite a bit missing there, and now it has been repaired. And again, you can see there's a quite a bit of erosion, and again, it's more vertical erosion. There is some sort of horizontal sorry, uh, vertical there, but mainly horizontal erosion. And again, this has been, this portion and this portion seems to be about the same, but uh, this section of casing stones has been repaired. Now, I, I bring that up because there's this, uh, in regards to, there were samples taken from this stone and, and there has been to, uh, well, an ongoing debate in regards to it's not limestone, that it's a geopolymer or some sort of artificial stone. I do not know exactly where, there are a few samples taken and analysed, I do not know exactly where they came from. So if they come from this later repair, which I haven't been able to date, uh, well that would bring into question uh, those findings in regards to artificial stone, uh, geopolymer, etc. So I would, um, admittedly I haven't looked into it too much, I don't really buy into it, I'm not saying that uh, it's wrong but I, I, it's just not an area that interests me because I'm more interested in the geometry and other sort of features but just uh, you know following that path um, so I just thought I'd bring that to your attention that there has been work done here on the north side where these uh, casing stones did survive now it's an interesting question even these ones will show as we go around and look at the other casing stones on the other sides and because there are some interesting questions in regards to, firstly, the samples that were taken, exactly where, where they taken from. If they were taken from a section where there would have been a repair, that would explain the uh, that that does not chemically, structurally match the Tura limestone. Now, this is from the J. H. Cole survey, 1925. He did a very, very accurate survey of the pyramids. Uh, Petri a little bit before him and he incorporates Petri's data. I'll link this paper in the description. And this is from, the, now you can see here they've uh, drawn the casing stones. So A, here we see A, that's the north side. And then we see the different sides. So C, H, you can see how the casing stones have been worn away. And I and J, which is over this side. But we'll have a look at those photos. So the north side, again that illustration which shows the casing stones. Well, they made of the way they figure it was previous. We get down here and eye it up. You can see if they're straight. I think they're, there's the top of the pyramid. See it? So this is uh, the way they did it. So here's a recreation of the way they built it. They got the stone and it goes all the way into here. And then the next stone, as you can see over here, goes on top. Again, that illustration which shows the casing stones in good condition on the north side, and there we see them there. Again, just to flick through north side casing stones, which are an important feature in getting the angle. And again, the north side, you can see the Amamun entrance and the main entrance there. So definitely on the north side, and again, you get an idea of the on the western side of that piece where there's those. Um, broken stones, again, north side casing stone, so that's there on the north. Okay, but on the east, that's what they look like. They're quite, they're very, very different, and again, horiz um, horizontal erosion is the uh, uh, main thing that's happening here. Now, the question would be why, like this piece does, you know, there has been work along there, but this piece still good condition. Now, why is this have no erosion? as where this eastern side does. 
Uh, here's a screenshot from, I'll show you the video, but that's the Mike Haddock video where he walks around the Great Pyramid. He, I think he identifies it as a, anyway, gets his sides wrong, but he's pointing the stuff out. And there you can see, so. The base of the Great Pyramid, it's all eroded. But you're going to notice, they all got mortar between them. So, older photo and the video from Mike Haddock uh, walking around the base of the Great Pyramid again. It's horizontal erosion. It doesn't match, for instance, the Sphinx enclosure. Okay, now on the western side, where we have I and J, you can see there now. This is a screenshot from the Mike Haddock video. Again, horizontal erosion, which would be wind and, and sand erosion, not water. There's an extended view, and you can see that there has been a repair. Uh, or something's gone on further down. We'll get another photo. So you see along again, it's horizontal erosion lines, and there have been three stones. I would think that they've been repaired. I couldn't get an old photo to confirm that. Uh, but yeah, like why are these eroded like that and these are not? Again, it does look. Um, I think it, okay, from that photo, you can even see the, it's been cemented over. Or you know, artificial, but again, these have been repaired. Here again, here's some remaining parts of the exterior of the pyramid, and you can see everything's in a straight line. So when they made these stones, they were all the same size, and then they just backed it up. And that's just the okay snapshot through, and again. Now we know it's on the way. Now I think he identifies it as the eastern side, but we know it because there's the Cafre Pyramid. This is definitely on the western side of the pyramid, of the Great Pyramid. So you go back there. It has been quite a bit of work done uh, to cement over repair. And again, this uh, why does these samples that were taken and and the Vidovits and that type of area. Uh, I don't know, maybe the samples were taken from, let's say, for instance, from this stone, which does seem to have much more historic value, as where these have definitely been some repair work done. So if, if those samples were taken from there, that, that, that would be the answer, but I don't know where they were taken from. There's the eastern side, and an older photo again, so the screenshot, Mike Haddock, and older photo. So, uh, the west and the east, lots of the casing, surviving casing stones. Maybe again, even in the past sometime, like way, way back, they, there was a repair and change, and, and this erosion comes from that later period, I don't know. But across the, from what I've seen of a plateau, the erosion is horizontal. It is not, uh, even in bed, even the surviving bedrock itself, I don't see it that it has the same erosion as what is shown inside the Sphinx enclosure. I, I, from what I've seen, it, the uh, overwhelming majority of the erosion is horizontal, windblown sand erosion, not vertical water erosion. But the big question for me is why uh, are these old casing stones, which are clearly, clearly much older from, I would say, just from the erosion, well, firstly they're horizontal, but what was preserving this north, like why have they eroded so much and why is the north, now again you can wish I had like much higher resolution but we see it tend, it, it looks, now that is sort of half horizontal, half vertical but just like on the east and the west side it does tend to look more horizontal, wind blown, wind blowing along the ground, sand blasting it and creating those um, weather lines as well. The north side, for some reason, it was well, well preserved. Maybe it was a repair in in antiquity to it. I don't know, but yeah, yeah, east, west, and so I don't know the answers. I'm just sort of looking at this now, but it is an important feature because there we get the angle of it. We can get a reasonably good angle even just from the rough stones, but to get a very precise angle, uh, we sort of we are relying on this northern casing stones and then it's like, uh, like oh, can we be absolutely sure i i, I don't well we, we can't really uh at least i can't but something's going you know just it's an interesting point what's happened in the past why were these 
preserved much better than the others. I'd, and my logic would dictate to me that there's, you know, they would be sort of relatively equally eroded on all the sides because it's east and west. Surely then it'd be so northerly and southerly winds. The south side of the pyramid is just, uh, there's only fragments of casing stone left. Isn't You can not really get any sort of angle or, or anything from there. And yeah, just a share and a, and a follow up from the last one when I was looking at the, again, where you can see the small stones and the features there. So even if you look at the earlier photos, like that's still what it looks like today, these particular stones. But yeah, more of a, like no answers and actually just suggesting a whole lot of questions. What's, what's uh, happening? What's, why are they eroded in these different patterns? And uh, just to highlight the fact, again, the fact that there has been. So coming back to the north side, and you can see there's been significant work uh, done to that area since it was first cleaned out uh, probably very early 19th century, definitely by 1925 in the J.H. Cole survey. So any samples in regards to the origins um, or the geopolymer artificial stone uh, just be very important to know exactly where they were taken from because that would answer so many of the questions or bring new questions up to investigate. But a very important feature. But one side I haven't mentioned is the south side. So here we see the southern base and the uh, illustrations of that from the J.H. Cole survey and more so than probably any other side as we saw those earlier uh, video and photos. The southern side, the, the casing stones are essentially next to nothing or very little that can be analyzed in regards but uh, let's have a look at Mike Haddock. So we're looking at the stones the pyramid started way down here but I want, I want you to see is that's a straight row. So in review we see the east and the western side significant erosion uh, in compared to the surviving casing stones on the north. The erosion pattern is much more in line with wind-blown uh, horizontal erosion. Uh, nothing really to indicate any sort of you know rain or, or uh, w water erosion in that sense. But the curious nature of why uh, some of those northern stones, especially the one closest to screen, were so well preserved in regards to east and west in the past. Was there some repair work uh, done? Is there another explanation? I, I can't say, but definitely the east and the western side are quite a bit different from the remaining casing stones on the north and definitely on the north there has been some work so again any uh, of the analysis in regards to what makes up those stones and leading to potential for artificial stone geopolymer etc uh, it would be very important to know ex precisely where those samples were taken because clearly there has been some work done in that respect.